author, blogger, and explorer of sorts, Kick Marshall is coming to Quebec to eat. He's crossing Canada on a motorcycle in search of the foods that tie Canadians to their culture, and he plans to write a book about what that food means to us. Kix has already written a memoir about another epic road trip from Canada to Argentina. That's titled Claire, starting with a K, A Man, a Monkey, and a Motorcycle Adventure to the End of the Earth. Now he's coming to Quebec, and he's going to be on the lookout for people who show to show him what foods are important to them. Kix is in Campbellford, Ontario right now, and we've joined him live this morning. Hi, Kix. Welcome to All in a Weekend. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. How are you in Campbellford? Really good, actually. Uh, I am doing really good. I'm actually not far from Algonquin at the moment. I'm headed to Campbellford tomorrow. Okay. Algonquin's really nice. Oh, such a good place. Oh, man. Moose and foxes and scenery and lakes. What a good part of the country. Yeah, it's beautiful there. Um, and are you, so are you on your motorcycle for this Cross Canada tour? Yeah, I'm on a little Honda 250 dirt bike. I thought it would be... Uh, what? I tried to use, yeah, I tried to say motorcycle because I get the impression that people think, oh, you're on a big motorcycle, but it's more <laughs> like a dirt bike. How often do you have to fill that up if you're on a dirt bike? Very often. Yeah. That is, uh, if there's any challenge to riding across the, one of the largest countries, I guess the second largest country in the world on a dirt bike, it is gasoline for sure. We go about <laughs> 200 kilometers by tank of fuel. So it's, uh, it has to be planned for quite regularly. I would imagine uh, you're not driving across Liechtenstein for crying out loud. So there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of gas to fill up. So um, tell me about the focus of this book. What are you looking for? Sure. So I thought that I would go across the country and if I wanted a dirt bike, it would be uh, a more of an in-your-face way to get to know people and meet people and there would be sort of no barriers and it's also kind of interesting. And I was hoping to go through as many small towns and sort of regionally specific parts of the country in order to capture stories about Canadian culture and cuisine. And what kind, so um, you, you want to speak to people, but are you speaking with chefs? Are you speaking with restaurants, like kiosks? What what do you, what kind of people are you looking to speak to? We're looking to speak to real people. And so before I left, there was a few rules that I put in place. And uh, one was that I didn't want to go to places that could be Google reviewed. So no restaurants and uh, nothing along those lines. I wanted to meet the real people in Canada and find out which foods were most culturally important to them, which has been a challenge, I'll tell you what. It's one thing to just go on Yelp or Google and find a restaurant and call someone up and say, hey, can I come over and talk about your food? That's really easy. But to find people in small communities and out-of-the-way places and talk your way into their kitchen and sit at their dinner table and have them show you a regional meal and sit in their face with a camera and get them to explain why that food's so important to them and their family and how it evolved in that area has definitely been a challenge. But once you're in the door, whew, man, people are friendly. What kind of recipes and stories have you found already? So there's, oh, there's been so many. I've met, uh, I've met a lot of very interesting people. So I got to deal with uh, the Haida people and the uh, Niskas in sort of North, Northern British Columbia. And I got to deal with the Mennonites and Hutterites in Saskatchewan and some Icelandic groups and uh, French Canadians, that kind of thing. One of the most interesting ones was uh, definitely smoked sea lion in Northern BC. I met a guy named Lonnie who happened to have been smoking sea lion most of his life due to that part of the world that he lived in. And he was able to take me around and show me what they did in the community to smoke regional meats and that kind of thing. And then we sat down and he had me for sea lion stew one night. And then he had me back for sea lion ribs the next night. And it was really, it was a very unique experience that I don't think I would have had anywhere else in the world. I don't think so. What, how did you like the taste of it? It was good. It was really, it was, really? I was expecting the worst. I was expecting these look at a sea lion and I'm thinking blubbery, fishy, something along those lines. And we were having the ribs at his place and I couldn't quite nail the flavor. And I was like, man, this is really good. But I, it was really meaty and really rich and kind of sweet because of this barbecue sauce he made. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next day I was down at their community smokehouse where they were smoking sea lion and pickling flipper and that kind of thing. And one of the ladies had said, that one of their people was in Alberta the year before and sat down with a farmer for dinner and said, I, this meat reminds me of sea lion. What is it? And he goes, oh, we're eating bison burgers. And she's like, I'm like, that's what it is. Sea lion tastes like bison. That's it. Wow. One I I, not what I was picturing in my head before I got there. Huh. Um, and how, so th that's very different from other parts of the country, but how much of the kinds of foods changed as you've traveled across the country? Drastically. I think it, it's, Within a couple of hours, even things changed so much. And it also depends on your heritage as well. 
So, for example, I went to um, Gimli in Manitoba, and it's uh, the largest Icelandic community outside of Iceland. And so it's a very, they have both Canadian culture as well as Icelandic culture, as well as the foods that grow there or can be harvested there. And uh, pickerel cheeks were a really big thing there, which I'd never had before. And so this lady actually brought me to her house and cooked me pickerel cheeks and um, told me about the Icelandic culture, that kind of thing. And then even driving a little bit more south within the same province, even I got to meet some French Canadians who were from the former pea soup uh, capital of or soup pea capital of Canada and taught me about pea soup. And they're French Canadians. And that was only was within a couple hours of each other, two completely different cultures and two completely wow. different foods and in the same province even. So it changes so quickly. And the peas for that soup, they're grown there, right? They were originally, so before right. the that was the soup pea capital of the country. Uh, apparently, they're losing that title because the crops have changed over the years. But that was the at the time it was a very regionally important part of the country because of all the soup peas that grew there. So, ve- so really interesting, and you don't have to go far mm-hmm. to find diversity. When are you going to be in Quebec? So I'm going to be in Quebec next week. I'll actually be there for Canada Day for about three weeks. So three weeks. So what are you planning? Do you have anything planned so far? Do you plan when you come to a province? Like what have you got in mind? Okay. So usually what happens is I'll, before I get to a province, I'll try and contact as many people as I can based on maybe tips and research and uh, try to isolate a little area that would be the most significant in terms of food and culture, that kind of thing. Quebec, however, has been mentally and uh, the most challenging one for me because one, I don't speak French, which I understand it's a very, it's obviously a French speaking province and people speak English too, but I understand the French is also the first language. So it's important to respect that. And two, I've been warned the closer I get that it's going to be very difficult in the small towns uh, to speak to people because I'm an Anglophone and sort of get to know them. And I've been basically talking myself into people's kitchens the whole way. And if I can't do it in English, I I just can't do it. And so I'm hoping to meet a couple of people to teach me some culturally significant dishes, mm. but I'm going to need your help here because I don't know. <laughs> Quebec's the one place in the whole country that I just can't pull off on my own. Right. So you're going to need people to help you kind of navigate that a, l- a little bit. Yes, I would definitely, uh, okay. I would, I'm definitely seeking some help in terms of finding a couple of people and it could be anywhere in Quebec. I'm not afraid to travel, traveling across the whole country. So preferably a small town somewhere because you usually find the most interesting people and uh, something regional. I've been, I've been told I should look for something like, I believe you pronounce it, Tortière Lac Saint-Jean. Yeah, that's right. Tiltier Lac Saint-Jean. It's usually made around Christmas, but uh, listen, I've never turned it down when it's not Christmas. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and it is so tourtière that is a point of contention so depending on where you come Even from <laughs> yeah it's a point of contention in quebec it depends where you come from they make it differently i will not so if i say there's no one way to make tourtière i'm still going to get texts going there is it's mine uh so <laughs> so, <laughs> so expect that <laughs> yeah, perfect. i'm open to it it's almost like the are there should you have raisins and butter tart um uh, debate. Oh, I just went through that. Did just, you? Yeah, yeah. What was the conclusion? Through. Because I right. think raisins in food is evil, but <laughs> I understand and I'm friends with people who like raisins and things. But what was your conclusion? Uh, my personal conclusion is that I like raisins and butter tarts. And there was just a festival in Ontario. I think it was, I think in Midland, I believe is the place where mm-hmm. they did the butter tart festival. They do it every oh, year. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. They just had it last weekend okay. and uh, they determine the best butter tart for professional and individual, that kind of thing. And I don't know if someone with raisins or without one specifically, but if you go through their feed on there, the debate doesn't end. It, it just, No, like, it just of course it end. doesn't. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that, uh, which is great. It's great. That, and it also doesn't end across the border because I'm also told that that originates from Quebec, potentially. And it, uh, Ontarians also believe that it sort of is their special dessert. So. I will say I don't like raisins in my butter tarts, but I know people who enjoy raisins in their butter tarts and I am still friends with them. So that is a it's a thing. But so you have how many maple recipes have you gotten so far? Because you're coming to Quebec. 
Yeah, that's so that's top of my list. I didn't. I got offered some maple recipes in uh, Manitoba, which was great. It was very nice of them, and Ontario as well because of the maple trees there. But I said I had to leave it to Quebec because I that's a toe I didn't want to step on. The world knows maple syrup comes from Quebec, sort of, <laughs> and uh, so I, just seventy percent of the world supply. You know exactly so again it could be debatable someone right. from whatever vermont could say hey we have maple syrup but it's just not yeah, the i'm same. sure you do yeah just <laughs> not the same so yes i would love to do something maple leaf for sure and i was also told uh i you'll have to pronounce the name for me because you know it yeah a dough fried in maple syrup oh grandpère. grandpère yeah like grandpa yeah because they're because <laughs> they're wrinkly it's t- <laughs> it's a terrible thing. To say. Anyway, yes, you have to have grand père. I mean, that's one of my favorite maple desserts. But again, uh, public weigh in on uh, on this. Um, and you, so we don't have much time left. But I want to get out to how if people are interested in getting in touch with you, um, uh, what do they do? Okay, so there's you can basically take my name, Kix Marshall, K I X. M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L and you just put that kicksmarshall.com will take you to my website or you can go into Facebook or Instagram. It's all the same. It's just my name. And if someone has a friend or family who would be willing to invite me in and teach me about some local cuisine and their culture and explain why it's so important to them, that would be amazing. Okay. And you are going to be here in July. So they have to have availability in July as well. Yeah, first three weeks of July, I'm uh, relatively flexible, and I understand that it's your schedule I'm revolving around, so we can Mm -hmm. make something work for sure. Okay, so it's kicksmarshall.com, kicks with a K and an X, we should say, K-I-X, anyway. Yeah, K-I-X. Okay. (laughs) Perfect. So um, I will, and we already have people who are asking for uh, the website address. Uh, Kicks, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck, and listen, get in touch with us when the book is finished, please. Yeah, thanks a lot. That'd be great. Thanks a lot for your help. Uh, The thing I was most worried about was Quebec and CBC stepped in and united the country (laughs) again. So I appreciate it so much. We do what we can. Have a great trip. Great. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Author Kix Marshall is coming to Quebec looking for people to share their stories about the food that connects them to their culture. You can find out more about him and contact him through his website, kicksmarshall.com. That's K-I-X-M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L.com. And you can reach him also through um, Instagram and Facebook, Kix Marshall. Uh, you can find his username there and um, and let him know if you'd like to show him our pea soup here, your tourtière, all of your various maple recipes that I have had people talk about on this show. I've given him a few references already, but if you've got your own, uh, get in touch with him.